Hello and welcome to Climbing Daily and our week of Olympic coverage. Today is Monday and it's our first show. We're starting off looking at the schedule and the athletes competing. So we'll be bringing you videos every single day and our plan is to watch the coverage and give an alternative commentary and analysis of all the events. So let's talk about that schedule and we're kicking off immediately with qualifying. So qualifying on Tuesday and Wednesday. On Tuesday for the men's and it's at 5 p.m. Tokyo time. So convert it in whichever time zone you live in and on Wednesday for the women. And then on Thursday, we have the men's finals and on Friday, the women's finals. Yeah, so it is an absolutely packed week. So we're going to be super busy. Let's talk a little bit about the scoring because starting off with that qualification, we've got 20 women and 20 men and they're being whittled down to just eight places, eight for the men and eight for the women. And that's worked out by, as you'd expect, a combination of the three disciplines, speed, lead and bouldering. Now, by the time we get to the final, well, there's eight athletes going for those podium places and the scoring, well, that's worked out on a times basis. So you get one point if you win an event. If you come last out of eight, you get eight. So the best theoretical score you could get is one for the speed times one for the bouldering times one for the lead, which equals one and you win. Exactly, you're definitely gonna win at that point. The worst score, theoretically, eight times eight times eight, so 512 is the worst score that you can get in the finals. So this is where we start to really analyze things, right? And this is where our geekery comes in. And it's especially important if you're a speed climber, a specialist, because if you win an event, well, that puts you in a pretty good place for one of those podiums. Yeah, for example, Richard Kaibulin in Hachiojin 2019, he won the speed round and then got fifth in lead, which is not a bad score uh, because he got the bronze medal and uh, put him in a very good position now for the Olympics because we've seen him in a combined format and for him it works. Yeah, exactly. But where it's less helpful is, let's say your speed specialists aren't very good at the other events. Yeah, you could win it, you can get one point, but then if you got times eight and then times eight again for the other events, you're very unlikely to make the podium, but a win is important. And things kick off with the speed. So imagine if you are a fairly decent lead climber who could get a good score in speed, but you mess up that first race. You're immediately, you know, only really competing for fifth place. However, you can kind of save yourself, even though, for example, like Jakob Schubert arrived seventh in the speed, but fifth in bouldering and first in lead. So he picked it up during the race. That was when he was qualifying. Yeah, when he qualified. Yeah, so I mean, calculators are gonna be out and it is complex, but this is why you're gonna be listening to us talking because we are <laughs> gonna be analyzing it all for you so your heads don't explode with maths. Now, athletes, 20 of them, 20 men, 20 women, it's always difficult to talk about favorites, right? Because they've all got their different training schedules. It's amazing they've made it, you know, in the first place, but we are gonna talk about favorites. Well, we can start off with Adam Ondra. Yeah. He's a favorite because he climbed out sea outdoors and in the comp circuit, he always has done pretty much well. Uh, however, this year we didn't see him that often besides in Marion and Salt Lake. Um, and again, he won in Marion. Well, yeah, he was in Innsbruck, but we saw that slip, slip, didn't we, in the finals. Maybe Adam's one of those people who crumbles under pressure. Who knows? But then, as you said, he's climbed 9C. I mean, he's won world championships. He's certainly a contender for a podium place, as are a few others. I mean, I'm looking at the list here. Tomoe Narasaki in yep. front of his home crowd. Speed specialist as well. I mean, there's a move in speed climbing that's named after him, the Tomoe start. So he's got to be one of them. And my favorite, Jakob Schubert. Jakob Schubert has been competing since forever, so he does have a lot of experience. He's 30 years old. Um, yeah, good in bouldering and lead, so. He's got potential. He's got, yeah. Certainly got potential. Then your favorite, Alex, Alex Magus. Magus. What's up, Alex? Um, yes, he's, I mean, he competed a lot uh, in the past years, and we've seen him a lot in bouldering comps, probably just to, for him to train more um, because we know he's strong in lead. However, in speed, it's a gamble. We all don't really know how much they train speed. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the German team have been working hard, but yeah, that's certainly one of his weaker events. And for the women, it's hard not to talk about Janja Garnbrett just because she has won everything there is to win in climbing. And this season, again, being dominant right up to the moment where she stopped competing for the Olympics. It's hard not to put Janja as a favorite. 
So Yanya Gambret, not unbeatable, however, uh, because like Mionanaka, we've seen her put in a pretty good time in speed climbing. Mm -hmm. uh, she got bronze medal at uh, Salt Lake City. So that will be interesting to see in the mix of a combined format. Exactly. And talking about the Japanese women, Akio Noguchi, I mean, her last competition, she's retired from IFSC duties. This is it. She's going to leave nothing behind. So keep an eye on Akio. And of course, the young gun, Brooke Rabatu, this season from Team USA. I mean, what a season she had. Yeah, excellent score in bouldering, in lead. So we'll see it in the combined format. So that's perhaps some of our favourites to get into the final. Uh, but there are people who are definitely going to surprise us. Shauna Coxey is one of them. I mean, look, she, again, has won almost everything there is to win. She's a good lead climber. She's a good speed climber. Yes, she's had some injuries. And we haven't really seen her compete. She was in Salt Lake City. But she could come into these Olympics on amazing form as like a sort of dark horse and just crush everyone. But then we have Victoria Meshkova that won everything at the um, Moscow Championships. And uh, we haven't really seen her outside of that. So... A bit inconsistent, perhaps. Well, she's just 20 years old. Like She didn't just compete that much. Mm -hmm. But we'll see what her form will be. Alberto Ginez Lopez, I mean, that man has been a prodigy for so long. He's still super young. He trains with Adam Ondra. He's got potential, but you sometimes feel the weight of the world's upon him. And he had a bit of a different schedule to the other athletes. He was competing in Briançon right up to the very last limit for the Olympics. Is he too tired? Has he recovered enough? He just trained his best suit. He did all the lead championships till now. So maybe focused on that, really getting ready for his strong suit. Uh, but another wild card for the man, Kai Arada, because last time we saw him win was in 2018 at the Bouldering World Championships. And since then, we've seen him in semifinals. But again, if he wins the Bouldering, it might just really put him in a good place for the overall. Yeah, that's true. But I'll raise your wild card for the men's, Zhong Wonchon. Where did he go? He disappeared, came back in Innsbruck, looking like a new man, fit, he did well, he just looks like a cool dude at the moment, which makes no difference to his scoring, but you know, he's one of my favourites, so um, he's up there. But he could do something special. Yeah. He's been away for two years, let's see what his speed climbing's like. And for the women, I mean, Jessie Pilt, and the reason Jessie Pilt is a wild card is because of that injury she picked up. Yeah, three months ago, she did a rupture or a four pulley. Mm -hmm. So is three months enough to be informed for the Olympics Games? Time will tell. And this is why it is so exciting. Now, look, as we said, we've got 20 athletes for the men, 20 women. We can't go through them all. We don't have enough time. So we've just picked a few select talking points. But do let us know who you're supporting for the Olympics. Have we got our predictions wrong? Have we missed a wild card? Is someone else definitely going to win? Do let us know down below. We will see you tomorrow. For yes, the for first the round. men's qualifying event that will start with speed and then go on to bouldering and lead. It's at 5 p.m. local time, so in Tokyo. So convert that to your time zone. Exactly. We will see you very soon. We cannot wait. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more of these videos. And happy Olympic parties.